are temporary like one and two. Let me give you an example. Transmits the data, merges with a controller, and then splits to our five inputs. It's available as boards or as kits. And oh, we have a cat here. Hi, my name is Andrei Kujasev, and today I'm going to talk about products that I first created for myself, and then I decided to release it to the whole DIY community. I think that can be really interesting to, to many of you. So I have a pretty big studio here and uh, I have multiple media interfaces, pretty much everything which is available in the market. Eye connectivity probably is my favorite one today. Uh, I have a Maudio, I have Aldi Magic, I have Motu of MediaExpress uh, and many others. And uh, some of them have capabilities for different media routing features and I'm extensively using that since I have quite few synthesizers here and uh, I do need that for like a media splitting, media distributing, media merging kind of capabilities. But at some point I realized that I just need a couple of media splitters and media splitters is usually called media through boxes. And I started first of all shopping for units which are available in the market, reviewed a couple of them, realized, well, there are quite few good ones, but we have just very few ports in that, that's not something that really works for me. Uh, then I went to like uh, DIY portals and tried to, to look what other people are actually, actually designing. And I realized, well, some of them are really expensive ones and they shouldn't cost that much. Others, they just use some strange schematics that everyone calls proven and so on. So I thought, why don't I design, some, design something that I need for myself first? So today I'm going to show you a number of boards that I designed and which are currently available. So the first, um, the first board that I'm going to talk about is pretty much everything that it started with and it's basically a standard, uh, I would say the base schematics of a MIDI through interface. So it has one input and four outputs. And the, the main schematics, I, oh, the whole idea of that I put here is, first of all, I'm not using some proven schematics. I'm, I'm using something which is actually, which is measured and which is designed by the measurements rather than being used in some other um, synthesizer or other MIDI instrument. And so, um, obviously, it has optocoupler, it has a hex inverter, and it has a special scheme for basically for working, which is designed especially for the MIDI signals which are not only 5 volts today, they are also 3.3, like from the, the majority of the newest instruments, which are powered from 3.3 volts. For them, some of the early schematics of uh, MIDI through interfaces, it simply doesn't work. So I started with that board and that was the beginning of that. And then I started developing different ideas what also I can introduce. So that was a base board that uh, is pretty much easy. What can I do here? So. One of the ideas was, well, I don't know what is my power. This board, it needs power. It doesn't need much, but it needs a few at least. And it's not enough to power it through a MIDI interface. You actually have to have a separate power source and it has to be stabilized. So I was thinking, well, there are so many like USB ports all around. Why don't I support the power through a, like a standard USB charger? And, uh, and that would be the option that is Basically, you connect the power here and on this side you have a USB port. Then, of course, you can also use uh, a normal wall power. And uh, and if you install here the, uh, uh, basically, uh, the 5 volt uh, power regulator, so you can use with any, like a standard wall adapter. That was the base idea, to make it universal for the power and to make it power selected. That's why I have a jumper here, because this board is soldered to be powered from the, MIDI uh, from the USB interface. That was number one. Obviously, it's available as a kit, it's available as a board alone. That's all easy. The next, I thought, all right, I have one input for output. Why don't, why don't I design something which is more complex? And by more complex, I mean just more ports. So this board has one input and 10 MIDI outputs. Same schematics, but just instead of one inverter, you have two inverters. And there is not much 
big price difference between these two because just additional components are sockets and additional inventor, inverter and obviously the board is bigger so it's slightly more cost for production but other than that it's pretty much close cost. This board has in that case a power regulator so it's designed to be powered from the um, from the wall adapter but again you can put a jumper here and that can be your uh, USB power board. Easy concept, easy idea but what if you don't need 10 MIDI ports, you only need, well, not four, you need more, you need, for instance, six. So, uh, the board laid in the way that, actually, after you decided that I need six, you can cut the board and you simply just cut this piece and you don't use anything else. So, it's designed that you will not do any circuit shirt or any, you will not damage the schematics by just cutting the board to the number of ports that you need. That's kind of cool and you need you know for sure that you need, for instance, six ports or seven ports. Then I thought, how can else I develop that idea? And the next MIDI splitter, MIDI through board, came into my mind. And in this time, uh, that's again, uh, uh, two MIDI ports now, and you have 10 MIDI inputs. So instead of having a uh, uh, well, uh, instead of having one MIDI input, you now have two MIDI inputs, but they act separately. So the way it works, every MIDI output port, every one of these 10, it has a switch, which can be a switch like this. It can be a jumper. It's just, it's your own preference how you solder that because the connector allows you to put some switch, to put some toggle switches, if you'd like to use one. I'll show you that later. And basically you select which port uh, this MIDI output goes from MIDI input. So you select basically one or two. And in that case, you can design the MIDI through adapter. So that's completely independent, obviously. And you can design that it can be one input, two outputs, plus another one input and eight outputs. So because the output can be one or another, that can be completely separate and completely split between them. I found that cool idea. And uh, and especially I have that use in my studio where you have uh, two well MIDI inputs, for instance. One MIDI input is from the keyboard, from a synthesizer, and you have another input like from your DAW. And for your synthesizer, you select from where you want to have that input. And because it's all hardwired, that's the main idea of all of these units, that I like available products like iConnectivity, Motu, and others for very flexibility, but by designing this, I bypass all the firmware features, all the logic that they have, and they can potentially introduce the latency by just very simple hardware interfaces. And so that switch is actually does the work. Instead of like doing the merging of these two, I hardly select what it is. So cool. Again, available as a kit, available as a board. That's not the end of that. <laughs> My idea went crazy then, and I thought, all right, so I have a number of boards uh, which just do a simple split. I would like to do at least a couple of boards which do also a merge function. So um, this board actually is not that simple like others, so it, it has also microcontroller on the board. So this board has two MIDI inputs and uh, five MIDI outputs. So, and these two MIDI inputs, they are merged together and then distributed to five MIDI outputs. And obviously merging is done by the microcontroller. We very optimized the firmware, which is running on that microcontroller. So I know for sure that it's basically, it's extremely designed for the latency and very low latency um, and the latency optimizations. So the way it works, obviously uh, any of those ports uh, transmits the data merges with a controller and then splits to our five inputs. Nice idea, uh, was pretty easy to implement, pretty much the same form factor as the original one, uh, one to four, just slightly longer, and it has microcontroller in it. I thought, cool, what else I can do with that? So then the idea came to the, I would say, the top range of these media splitters, and this board is two MIDI inputs and 10 MIDI outputs, pretty much like this board, but it has a merging function. So 
for each port, you select what you actually do for the port. And it has a microcontroller here, obviously, too. So each port can be either MIDI input 1, either MIDI input 2, or it can be a merge of MIDI input 1 and 2. Let me give you an example. For instance, um, again, if you're really concerned about latency, concerned like really crazy concern, and you want to have a port being able to switch between MIDI 1 and MIDI input 1 and MIDI input 2, obviously you can select it with a switch, with a hardware switch. Fine. If there is some gear that you are not concerned for latency or well, you realize, well, obviously, this MIDI merger, it doesn't introduce that additional latency except one cycle of 4 megahertz, which is nothing, obviously. But you can select between 1 and 2, or you may say, I would like to merge 1 and 2 together and output to this port. And you do that for every of these 10 ports. And the difference between this interface and this interface is you now have two switches, because one basically says merge or not merge. And never is triggered when you don't merge, you select MIDI input 1 or MIDI input 2. It's slightly more complicated because I'm using more components here for doing all of this for extra functionality that I really need here. And obviously it has a microcontroller, so the board is slightly bigger. But again, it's, it's your choice. You can put these uh, slide switches, you can put toggle switches that you solder or you can put jumpers. It's only based on your requirement, what you have in the studio, and um, if you want to have it accessible or not accessible. Same idea pretty much here, like on basic controllers, that if, for instance, you don't need 10 output ports, you may say, I want to cut and make it eight output ports, and it still works. Great, um, the, final. the final interface was just an addition to all other interfaces that I designed a long time ago, and I was producing that at Deft Audio a long time ago. Uh, but basically, this is one MIDI input to the uh, DIN sync output and configurable sync output. So what means configurable? You, you see the basically uh, toggle switches here. Um, the idea that that is MIDI input, that is MIDI output on a, like a standard role specification which supports start, stop, continue, and obviously sync output of, uh, of um, sync 24. Uh, this output on a um, uh, 6.3 millimeter jack, uh, basically it configures how often pulses go. Now we have a cat here. <laughs> so um, it can be uh, uh, once in two bars, every bar, every half of a bar, every quarter, every sixteenth, and so, and so on up to Basically, it depends how you configure that. It goes up to 48 ppqm. Uh, that would be the maximum resolution of this, uh, of this output that you just set with a switcher. So you can actually change it in the real time and, uh, and it gives you a capability to sync it to multiple gears, to sync it to drum machines, to sync it to something that really needs these sort of uh, pulses. I think that's pretty much it. So all of these products available as boards or as kits and um, I'm heavily using them. I'm enjoying them in my studio with my big setups here. And so I hope you will enjoy that too. Well, thank you very much.